Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Welcome to episode 208 of Ask Dave. This is my fourth video on the amazing Anytone D878UV, this time regarding the new Bluetooth function. First, I'll update you with some more detail pertaining to the customer programming software, or CPS, and then we'll tackle the Bluetooth thing. This is a very capable radio, but the Bluetooth is not quite ready for prime time. The radio comes with a programming cable, a single sheet of paper packed right at the top of the radio stuff says not to install a driver. Connect the cable to the radio like this and to a USB port and turn on the radio. You do need to check device manager to determine the COM port, which you can do by right clicking on the Windows icon and choosing device manager. It will show all the active COM ports. Now, for previous videos, I loaded an Anytone driver for version 1.10, a D878UV without Bluetooth, and it's very possible that the PC picked up that old driver, which is why you see a driver starting with GD. In any event, this is the one you want, in my case, COM7. You must tell the programming software which COM port to use. It does not find it automatically. The firmware version of my radio is 1.12 marked by a sticker on the box. I upgraded that to 1.13. Note that the version of the CPS software you use must also be upgraded to 1.13. Be sure to go to Tools, then Options, which brings up the Annex Function setting and check the GPS, Bluetooth, and APRS options. You can get to Bluetooth options by selecting Optional Settings, which brings up a screen called Optional Setting. Go to Vox slash BT, leave Vox off, and Bluetooth settings are below that. Note the settings Anytone tech rep Dwayne Reese, N6DMR, gave me. BT on, BT plus internal mic off, BT plus internal speaker can be off or on. I leave on. Mic gain one can go up if stations on the other end have trouble hearing you. Note this is the gain setting for the mic that's part of the car. Five for speaker gain, hold time of 30 seconds so the system doesn't go back to what it was playing before for 30 seconds. You might prefer 10 seconds, but don't make it zero. The receive delay is how long the squelch must be open before it comes on via the car radio. Some people set this to one or two seconds to avoid the endless kerchunkers on active groups such as TAC310. There are multiple files you can upload from your computer into the CPS or customer programming software or download to your computer independently. This just brings them into the software. Note there is an option to export everything and have them in a list so that you can read them in all at once. Please note this refers to uploading and downloading between your computer's file system and the CPS software. You can upload to the radio from there, but for that you have only two choices, digital contact list or other data. The digital contact list is on this list, but all other files are lumped into other data for upload to the radio. I got a band error message, probably because I was mucking around in the CPS before getting serious. I fixed it temporarily by following the instructions on a Bridgecom Systems website PDF called Fixing the Anytone Band Error Message. Fundamentally, a band error is when the radio's perception of what bands it covers differs from the CPS's. This proved to be a difficult problem for me, and it didn't stay fixed long. I left a message for Bridgecom Tech, which they sent over to Dwayne Reese again, and 6 dmr and Anytone Tech Rep. Dwayne and I walked through several different approaches to the band error and finally got around it. 
One way was to turn on while the push to talk and one are pressed. This puts the radio into a test mode. After it boots, you can find a number at the bottom of the screen, which should be set to 0000. zero, 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 zero. And the last digit is blue on mine. Also, you can check basic device info using model in the CPS. It should say commercial Europe. Apparently, there exists some contact manager software referenced on the D878 support page, but no link to it is given. The link is n0gsg.com. I haven't tried it. I had a lot of trouble loading in the full list of talk groups. I was thrown at first, but finally figured out that the talk groups are not in numerical order. I imported the Bridgecom list. This messed up my channel information. It turns out the radio keeps track of the call group via its position in the list, not the actual number. So, lesson learned. Don't update the talk group list. Add new ones to the end of the old list. I was able to load the file of all DMR users. The Bridgecom website says to download the JSON version, J-S-O-N, and convert it to the CSV contact list using a piece of software they give you. But as it turns out, the CSV list is okay. You can find the most up-to-date contact list at radioid.net. Go to the database, then select database dump files. The CSV list is the one you want. They have fixed the problem I pointed out in the last video that the screen is blank for several seconds after turning it on. It now says, booting, please wait, which is a major improvement over a blank screen, and then followed by the Anytone logo, as shown in this side-by-side -side comparison of my older D878UV and the new D878UV+. The older radio still runs version 1.10 firmware. Notice that in optional settings slash other, choose working mode, select amateur radio. There is on the web page this drawing that, though blurry, shows the meaning of what's on the screen. It might be worth printing out and tucking into the manual since the explanation of the screen icons is not in the manual. I am missing a critical connector to test the antenna that came with the radio, as well as the two longer ones that are available as accessories. I need a BNC mail to SMA mail. I'll get one. When I get one, I can test the antennas better. Before we dive into the Bluetooth part, this is a good time to take a moment to click like, subscribe, and click on the bell. Okay, let's go into the tail of the Bluetooth capability. The best use case for it is while driving. They provide a little push to talk button that you can strap to your steering wheel. The D878UV will play through the car radio and you can use the vehicle's microphone just as you would with a hands-free cell phone call. I have both our vehicles set up for hands-free driving and was looking forward to the D878UVs Plus doing the same thing. I ran into problems right off the bat and Dwayne Reese and 6DMR spent a great deal of time over the phone trying to get this to work. We could get it to connect for a few minutes at a time, but then it would disconnect. After lots of trying and Dwayne's persistence, it just wouldn't stay connected. I suspect it's a firmware immaturity issue. Duane asked for the year, make, and model of my truck and will pass it along to other Anytone staff so they can try and locate one, sniff the radio connection signals, and see what's going on. So let's talk a little bit about Bluetooth. This short little supplement to the owner's manual right here walks you through the Bluetooth settings. Note that you can set these either through the radio's keypad or via the CPS. Bluetooth on-off is self-explanatory. 
If it is on, there will be a grayed out Bluetooth symbol at the top of the screen. If it is connected to something via Bluetooth, the icon glows blue. Bluetooth pairing is a bit more complicated. There are four submenu items. Seek Bluetooth seeks another Bluetooth device to pair with. Note the other device must be in pairing mode. Now available BT shows available devices you've paired with in the past that are still available to you. The paired list shows which devices have been paired with previously. These come from the radio's memory. And of course, Disconnect Bluetooth will force a disconnect with whatever it's paired with. BT Names gives the radio's Bluetooth name. Paired Names gives the paired Bluetooth names. Now, Bluetooth hold time is the time that the radio will stay connected to the Bluetooth device after there's no more signal. After this time, the car stereo will go back to what it was doing before. If you set this at zero, every time the device goes silent, such as in the middle of a QSO, the car stereo starts playing again. This delay can be zero, anything between one second and two minutes, or always on. You might want to try something like 10 seconds and see how you like it. The Bluetooth plus internal mic means both the automobile mic and the radio's Bluetooth mic are on at the same time. This will likely result in echoes. I suggest turning this off. The Bluetooth plus internal speaker means the conversation plays both through the D878UV as well as the car stereo. The BT mic gain is the gain level for the automobile's microphone. If your QSO partner says you need to be louder, turn this up and vice versa. Likewise, the Bluetooth speaker gain is the audio gain for the vehicle stereo. Note that the D878's volume control, this particular gain control, and your stereo's volume control all play a part in how loudly the incoming signal plays on the stereo. You will want to do some experimentation here. Now the BT PIN code, or personal identification number code, allows the entry of a PIN code generated by the pairing device during the pairing operation. The problem I had with this is that the stereo would give me a PIN, but by the time I could punch it into the radio, the PIN had expired. There's no point in continuing to punch in that same number, because the next time the stereo wants a PIN, it'll be different. This was very frustrating to me. Lastly, there is the matter of the push to talk button. It pairs easily. You select push to talk pair to pair the PTT button with the radio. Mine paired pretty instantly. The PTT name gives you the PTT button's name. PTT bat volt, battery voltage, shows the PTT button's rechargeable battery voltage. Keep yours charged. That's what this odd cable is for. Only one of the two cables connects to the push to talk button to charge it. The other just sits there. Dwayne Reese, one of Anytone's tech reps, really tried hard to help me get the Bluetooth to connect properly. In spite of many attempts to connect, we just couldn't get it connected for more than a few minutes. The truck Bluetooth insisted I find it listed on the radio as my car on the Bluetooth device, but I couldn't find that anywhere. Other strings of letters and numbers showed up, but just wouldn't work. I do point out that my cell phone pairs with the truck just fine with no issues. My conclusion here is that the D878UV Plus's Bluetooth capability simply is not ready for prime time. It works in some cases, but in my case, it refused to work properly. In spite of the Bluetooth debacle, which hopefully won't be a problem for you, this is a fine radio. It remains my favorite handheld radio, even edging out the Islands HD1. The radio has memory to store not only the entire DMR contact list, but also the entire DMR talk group list. It is a great DMR radio and also a good FM radio. 
It's a bit pricey at 239 US dollars, but you get a lot for your money. Do I still recommend the radio, which I previously reviewed earlier this year in Ask Dave videos 184, 195, and 206? The answer, yes. Do I recommend the latest Bluetooth add-on? Well, I think it needs some work to pair easily with my truck. I hope future firmware versions will get all that straightened out. If what you really want is that Bluetooth capability, I'd recommend holding off for a bit. Otherwise, it's a great radio. I recommend buying it from BridgecomSystems.com to avail yourself of their extensive tech support for the model, which includes an online course they call BridgeCom University. You can buy from other dealers, of course, but these other dealers can't offer the level of support that BridgeCom Systems does. Thank you, Augies Worldwide, for supporting this channel. This slide shows some URLs where you can support the channel with a, a little bit of money if you'd like to. Uh, tips go for as low as a dollar, and uh, you can go on up from there if you like. Now, something new that I have added at the request of Augies is that on PayPal, I now have a subscribe feature where you can provide a fixed amount every month for as long as you want to, and then you can cancel your subscription at any time. There's also Patron, which uh, does something very similar to that. So thank you so much for being an Augie. Thank you for spreading the word about this channel. I really look forward to our Saturday uh, live streams. Those are great, and it's a great opportunity for me to interface with Augies Worldwide. We usually have people from all over the world on that particular um, event, and uh, the recorded Saturday live streams are available on YouTube for you to take a look at. Until we next meet, 73.